Okay, we have a uh, Lawrence Elite 7 Ti on the bench. Uh, customer complaint is will not power on. So we have a power connector connected here. I'm gonna press the power button. So far, zero amps on the power supply being drawn, and nothing. Not responsive at all. So we're gonna go ahead and take this thing apart, and we'll get right back. Okay, so let's take this back off here. Just gonna do a quick visual inspection, see if we can see anything obvious here. Looks okay. Just gonna check this inductor here real quick. This power inductor right here. Five K is kind of odd for the left side of that inductor. If I remember, they're supposed to be very low resistance. But let's switch our voltmeter to volts. Uh, let's plug in power and try to trace where this 12 volts is going or where we're losing it. So I'm going to find a good ground on the board, or actually, better yet, use my power supply ground. So we're going one side of this inductor here. We've got 12 volts. You can see that down there. The other side of the inductor should be 12 volts. Yep, good. So this side is ground, obviously. Okay. So that's good. So we definitely got 12 volts coming into the board. So we're sitting here trying to figure out why this thing isn't turning on. Okay, we have power power hooked up here to our um, 
power cable, just OEM power cable. Checking voltages, checking, you know, voltages everywhere. Uh, trying to actually reverse part of the circuit just to figure out, like, how, on the Elite, how um, this thing powers on. It's it's different than the regular HDSs. So we're, we're trying to look for that MOSFET we've shown in different videos that controls powering out of the boards. Uh, we think we located it, but it's it's just acting so strange. It's it's The voltages on the MOSFET are, are strange. It's an N-channel MOSFET, so it, it, they just... Logically, they don't make sense. I'm getting a 12 volts on my on my drain, which is like that's the output. It's strange. Um, so we're starting to inject voltage into the board now. We're using, like I said, power supply going right to here, and um, we just took a clip lead, hooked up to our positive supply, hooked up to our tweezers, and we're sort of just probing right places we know there should be 12 volts when the board's on. And the board's just acting strange. It's just acting weird. Where we're probing, we're not seeing any current draw. So, just, you know, I, I tapped on a, a ground, ground plane. We should see a spike. It should be a direct short. There should be a huge, huge current spike through my power supply that I'm watching. Nothing. So I come over here. I short direct my power supply directly, thinking maybe there's an issue with my power supply on the bench. I see current draw, so power supply is okay. So this is crazy. I take my lead off off my ground of my power cable coming into the board. And you can't see it, but right here, right? Take my ground, plop it on there ground plane of the board right the power supplies on now this is all I did right I have my positive supply going through the connector and I have my ground of the power supply going to the the um, the ground plane of the board come over here to our connector And it fires up <laughs> so it's a grounding issue so I just wanted to make a point here where you know you look for the most complex issues and if you ignore the obvious I mean I, I was going crazy with this thing uh, I was here for quite some time troubleshooting like I said I got to the point where I'm removing components on the board so I can analyze the PCB layout to figure out where the power is routing and all this other stuff, all this complicated mess, and come to find out it's a grounding issue. So at least now we have something to uh, base our further troubleshooting on. We're, we're trying to find a ground issue here. So if we go back, take a look at this. Wait a minute. Okay, that bottom side of that inductor is showing zero volts, so that's a good ground. But the top side of that inductor, look at that. That's not a good ground. Let's play that back again. Mm-hmm. There. There. Look at that. I should have picked up on that. Should have picked up on it. In any case, looks to me like that's the issue. I just took a piece of wire here. I shorted the ground side of that inductor. And let's see what we get here. happens you focus on focus on things you always focus on the most technical things and sometimes you got to stop go back did I check the basics is it plugged in do I have my 
Uh, do I have a good ground? Do I have good 12 volts? Basic, basic, basic things. I wasn't here trying to reverse engineer the, the power supply section of this board, and it was a bad input inductor. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to replace that for the customer. Uh, we're going to put it back together. We're going to give it a good test. Make sure everything else uh, functions properly. And uh, we're going to get to something else. Um, but I guess the lesson for today is to slow down and uh, think of the most obvious things first. So you're not terrorizing yourself by trying to overly complicate what could be a simple repair. Okay, we got the board back on here. Uh, we we didn't have a replacement uh, input inductor there. You know, we actually have a whole bunch of different power inductors and stuff coming in from a supplier, unfortunately, overseas. Um, so it's going to take a while. Uh, in the meantime, we did uh, make make an inductor right there out of some um, an ammo wire we have. It's going to work fine. It's, it's perfect. Going to cause no issues. Okay, so we're going to turn on the power supply, and fingers crossed. Beautiful, beautiful. Excellent. All right, we're just going to test this, uh, run it through its paces. If anybody has any fish finders, uh, lower rants, hummingbird Garmin, uh, any electronics in general, we work on all electronic devices. And uh, the normal stuff, computers, you know. Uh, desktops, laptops, tablets, cell phones, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can go to RudolphRepairs.com. That's www.RudolphRepairs.com.